Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 79, so let's get to it. Now before I get to the episode itself, I do want to point out that the segment that they show at the start of every episode was updated to include Intellion starting with this episode. Which is surprising since this is the episode right after Drizal's evolution. In the past, it took them longer to update this segment to include new Pokemon or evolutions. So episode 79 begins in Ceres Institute where Chloe and Eevee are shown pictures of Espeon and Umbreon. Chloe and Eevee show an interest in these two evolutions as a result. Professor Ceres then shows them Eclipse Castle, which is a castle in the Johto region that has cherished Espeon and Umbreon as special creatures for centuries. Eclipse Castle is a fitting name considering that Espeon and Umbreon represent the sun and the moon respectively. Chloe and Eevee both say that they want to meet Espeon and Umbreon, so Professor Ceres mentions that Eclipse Eclipse Castle will hold a festival soon to celebrate the upcoming total eclipse. So, Ash, Chloe, and Gold decide to visit the castle. When they arrive at the castle, Chloe notices that the crest of the castle has Espeon and Umbreon on it, which is cool. Meanwhile, Eevee notices that something is glowing on the peak of a nearby mountain. They zoom in to show that there is a sundial on this mountain, which is the source of the glow. And Espeon and an Umbreon are here in front of the sundial. Eevee decides to head towards the glow and Chloe he follows her. Ash wonders why Espeon and Umbreon why were they chosen as the symbols for this castle and Gold wonders if there is some history to this. An old lady hears this and she approaches Ash and Gold so that she can tell them about the history of the castle. Long long ago during the Eclipse Festival, the lord of the castle was attacked by someone who wanted to take over the castle. And the lord was protected by his partners Espeon and Umbreon. So the lord decided to put Espeon and Umbreon on the crest of the castle to commemorate their victory. Go is amazed because the lady knows so much and she says that of course she knows so much, she is the current lord of the castle after all, but she will be stepping down from the position today. Ash and Golden notice that Chloe and Eevee are gone. The episode then cuts to Chloe who is still following Eevee. Eventually they reach the sundial and here they find a girl that is praying at an altar with Espeon and Umbreon by her side. The girl is praying for the success of the festival and she is also praying that everyone accepts her as the new lord. So she is the one that will succeed the old lady that was shown earlier. Now Espeon sees a vision of the future in which Eevee runs off a nearby cliff, which does end up happening but since Espeon knew it would happen, Eevee is saved. Chloe is happy because Eevee is okay and the girl says that it is all thanks to Espeon's ability to see the future. Chloe looks up to the girl to say thank you and, much to her surprise, the girl looks just like her. They both introduce themselves while in shock since they still can't believe just how much they look alike. Even their names are similar. The girl's name is Haruhi, while Chloe's name in Japanese is Koharu. They both have Haru in it. Haru means spring. Chloe says that she and Eevee came to the castle to see Espeon and Umbreon, which makes Haruhi happy, since it means that Chloe and Eevee came all this way just to see them. Haruhi then says that she has an idea. The episode then cuts back to the castle where Ash, Go, and the old lady from before are shocked because Chloe and Haruhi look so similar. Now it turns out that the old lady is Haruhi's grandmother. Haruhi then reveals that she is actually not Chloe, she is just dressed like her because she changed outfits with Chloe to see if they could fool everyone else, which they did. They did not fool me however since Haruhi has two distinguishing features that set her apart from Chloe. The first and most obvious difference is in the hair. Haruhi has a circle pattern on the left side of her hair while Chloe has a flower pattern instead. They also have a different ornament on their hair. The second difference is in the boy. While they are both voiced by the amazing Kan Hanazawa, Haruhi speaks in a Kansai dialect, so it's clear who's who by the way they talk. <laughs> Haruhi says that she feels that meeting Chloe was a true fated encounter. Chloe then tells Haruhi about Eevee's unique situation and behavior. Chloe also says that she wants to let Eevee choose her own path. Haruhi says that this is interesting and that she thinks the same way. Espeon and Umbreon evolved on their own. Espeon saved Haruhi from a fall when the sun was out, which allowed her to evolve into Espeon. And I said her because this Eevee that evolves into Espeon is female, since her tail has a heart shape.
shaped pattern. Now how do he says that Espeon was always very loyal even as an Eevee which is why she evolved into Espeon. But it was probably because the sun was out and Eevee's bond with Haruhi improved since Eevee saved Haruhi and Haruhi was thankful for this. On the very same day, Haruhi's other Eevee, which is male since it does not have a hard shaped pattern on its tail, evolved into Ombreon after he protected Haruhi from a crowbat. This happened during the night, which is why this Eevee evolved into Umbreon. Haruhi says that this Eevee evolved because it wanted to protect the Yespion that he loves so much. Though again, I think that he evolved because the bond between Haruhi and Eevee improved during the night. Now I do think that this is a poor example of choice, since it's not like either Eevee chose to evolve when they did. They simply chose to help Haruhi because she was in trouble, and she just happened to be in trouble during the day for one Eevee and during the night for the other. Other Eevee. But regardless of whether it was by choice or not, the evolutions worked out in the end since Haruhi is going to be a Lord of Eclipse Castle and she gets to have the two Pokemon that are the insignia of the castle by her side. Haruhi says that Espeon is strong in the day while Umbreon is strong in the night. They make up for each other's flaws and they support and complement each other well as a result. This is something that humans can do with Pokemon and with other humans as well. Nobody is perfect, which is why life is a little easier when everyone works together, helping and complementing each other. I have to say that this is a great life lesson and I commend Haruhi for how wise she is. Ash, Chloe and Go are amazed because this grand and deep speech proves that Haruhi is indeed a lord. Haruhi is concerned though because if the festival does not go well she will not be accepted as the lord, but Chloe reassures her that everything will work out. Haruhi then takes everyone to a storage room where they keep a lot of relics and other important artifacts, including a picture that depicts the moment when Hisashi, the lord of the castle, was giving a speech, which was just before he was attacked. Haruhi reveals that the lord was attacked by his younger brother, Sukiya, which is a twist straight out of a historic epic. Haruhi says that when she becomes the lord, she will make sure that something like this does not happen again. She then leaves to get ready since the festival is about to begin. Meanwhile, a boy is seen looking at the castle from a distance alongside his knockdown. He says that the days of living in humiliation will be over today. Considering what Haruhi said, it's not difficult to imagine what this boy has in mind. So Chloe realizes that she is still wearing Haruhi's outfit, therefore she decides to separate from Ash and Go so that she can go back for her own outfit. However, the boy from earlier kidnaps Chloe using his Ariados because he thinks that Chloe is Haruhi. The boy then uses his knocked out to escape with Chloe in hand, leaving Eevee behind. Haruhi gets ready to show herself to the public during the festival with Ash and Go among the people watching. Go mentions that Chloe is taking her time. Evie soon shows up and she wants to enlist Ash and Go's help to find Chloe. The episode cuts briefly to Chloe to show that she is still tied up and that she was hidden inside of a tree. She is also worried because Haruhi is in danger. Back at the festival, the boy that kidnapped Chloe is confused because Haruhi is somehow here, even though she should still be in the tree where he left her. So he has knocked out attack Haruhi with air slash, which Haruhi avoids. The boy wants to know how Haruhi got away, but Haruhi of course has no idea what he is talking about. So the boy realizes that he kidnapped a double or a twin sister. Haruhi realizes that the boy did something to Chloe, so she demands answers. The boy says that he will return Chloe if Haruhi names him the new lord of the castle. While Haruhi does not agree to the boy's demand, she still does tell Umbreon to stand down so that the boy does not do anything to Chloe. Meanwhile, Ash, Go, Pikachu, Eevee, and Grookey search for Chloe, but they can't find her. Eevee is saddened by this, however, she soon sees a vision which tells her where Chloe is. This vision is just like the vision Espeon had earlier in the episode, which shows that Eevee is once again mimicking her evolutions. The episode then cuts to Haruhi, who decides to comply with the boy's demand so that Chloe is not harmed. However, Haruhi's grandmother wants to know the boy's name first. While the boy is reluctant to comply at first, he ultimately reveals his face and his name, which is Kazuki. 
He then tells Haruhi that she should hurry up and comply with his demand. Haruhi is about to do just this, but before she can, Chloe shows up alongside Ash and Go and they foil Kazuki's plan. However, Kazuki does not back down. He sends out his Ariados and an Ursaring to battle alongside his Noctowl. Ash and Go get ready to fight back, but Haruhi says that she wants to handle the situation instead, since this is an important moment that will determine if she will become the Lord. She does try to to reason with Kazuki, but he refuses to talk things out, and the battle begins. Ariados uses poison, jab, Noctowl uses wing attack, and Ursaring uses hammer arm, but Espion uses reflect to block all the attacks, while Umbreon uses snarl to strike back. Eevee looks at Espeon and Umbreon with admiration. Ariados then uses String Shot, which Eevee avoids. Eevee then tackles Ariados, but Ariados easily shrugs off the attack. Ariados then uses Pin Missile. Haruhi tells Espeon to use Reflect again, however before she can, Eevee uses Reflect first to be a copycat. Espeon then uses Wish, and Umbreon uses Dark Pulse, while Noctowl uses Air Slash and Orsering uses Slash. Umbreon hits Noctowl before Noctowl can land a hit, but Umbreon is hit by Orsering as a result. However, Umbreon is healed by Wish. Fun fact, this is the first time that Wish has been used in the anime, even though it's a move that was introduced way back in Generation 3. The total eclipse then begins, and Haruhi says that this is a great opportunity because Espeon powers up with the sun, while Umbreon powers up with the moon, so a total eclipse is the one time when both of them power up, since the sun and the moon become one. Kazuki refuses to give Espeon and Umbreon the chance to power up, so Ariados uses Pin Missile, Noctowl uses Air Slash, and Ursaring uses Hammer Arm, but Eevee uses Dark Pulse via Copycat to buy time for the Eclipse to complete, so Eevee does end up copying a move of each of her evolutions. With the power of the Eclipse, Espeon uses Psychic and Umbreon uses Dark Pulse, which defeat all of Kazuki's Pokemon. Haruhi then approaches Kazuki and she says that her grandmother has been looking for him for years. The castle used to have a tradition of putting the sun and the moon in people's names. The he in Haruhi means sun, just like the he in Hisashi, the lord from the painting. Hisashi's brother was called Sukiya. Suki means moon. Kazuki's name also has Suki because he is a descendant of Sukiya. Now it is interesting that when Haruhi's grandmother talked about the lord that was attacked in the past, one of the Pokemon that attacked him was an Ursaring, which is a Pokemon that Kazuki also has. So I guess that this is a family tradition, which is fitting considering that Teddy Ursa has a moon pattern on its face, and Ursaring is based on the Asian Black Bear, whose Japanese name literally means Ring of the Moon Bear, which is why Ursaring has a ring pattern on its torso. So, Kazuki confirms that this is the case. His ancestor was ashamed because he failed to become the Lord, so his descendants have all lived in secret. And Kazuki was tired of living like this, so he decided that he would become the Lord of the castle someday. Haruhi's grandmother embraces Kazuki, and she says that she knew that there was a child named Kazuki, but she was never able to find this child. So she is glad that she finally did find Kazuki, and she apologizes because if she had found Kazuki sooner, then he could have lived a better life. Haruhi then announces to everyone that she is now the new lord, and that Kazuki will help her along the way. Kazuki is confused at first, but Haruhi says that they are basically siblings, and that she and her grandmother have been waiting for their missing moon for a while. Espeon and Umbreon support and complement each other, and the sun and the moon also work together to create a peaceful world. Kazuki and Haruhi should do the same. There's no use in fighting or in remaining bound to the past. Instead, they should change what they can change so that they can move forward. Kazuki tears up, clearly touched by Haruhi's words, and he simply nods and smiles in agreement. So everyone claps in celebration for Haruhi and Kazuki, and the episode ends with a shot of the whole group, which reveals that Eevee was given a medal with the insignia of the castle. This medal has both halves merge like an eclipse, which is a nice touch. And on the topic of this medal, it's worth noting that Espeon and Umbreon also have a medal, except that they have only half of the medal. The half that corresponds to them, which is another nice touch. But that's the episode. 
So overall, this was a great episode. I love doppelganger episodes, or episodes where the characters swap identities, since episodes like this tend to be hilarious, and they usually have some fun interactions and crazy situations. Now granted, this episode did not really do anything too crazy with the doppelganger situation, but it was still a fun episode. It was nice to have two Chloes in one episode, and it is interesting that Chloe met Dawn a few episodes ago, and Dawn also has a doppelganger that is a princess slash lord slash royalty, so it's nice that Chloe also got a doppelganger as well. I really like the lessons that Haruhi taught not only Chloe, but also Kasuki, and the prevailing theme of complimenting and supporting others, which was perfectly encapsulated by Espeon and Umbreon. It was nice that Evie got to meet two more of her evolutions, and that she copied their moves as usual. Now someone commented on one of my previous videos that it would be cool if a new evolution was given to Chloe's Eevee based on the Eclipse, which is similar to what happened with Ash's Lycanroc. And I think that this is a good idea, and this episode would have been the perfect opportunity to introduce this new evolution. But of course, it did not happen because it is still too early. Chloe's Eevee will surely evolve much, much later, since the journey towards her evolution is the whole point of Eevee's character arc. So they will wrap it up anytime soon, especially since Eevee still has to meet Jolteon, Flareon, Glaceon, Leafeon, and Sylveon in their own special episodes. But I do think that it is possible that Eevee might evolve into a new evolution someday, considering that we have not seen a new evolution since Generation 6. It would honestly be a better payoff than having Eevee evolve into one of the existing evolutions. But yeah, in the end, I do think that this was a great episode, and that's the video. As always, Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.